Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to yet another beer review with me, Peter the Master of Hoppets, today joined by Rich of Enomyces. I hope that you guys can notice that the sound is a bit different because now the microphone is right here instead of all the way over on the camera. We've got some new gear because we have a very good microphone. I have a very good microphone for shooting these videos. Mm. There's probably still going to be a bit of echo. We can't 100% get rid of that because of the apartment I live in. It is very echoey. It's very old. Next step is to, you know... Soundproof yeah, it. Yeah, soundproof the whole place. Uh, but I did some tests yesterday and it seems like this works really well because it's yeah, it's just outside the frame on a, an actual microphone stand. Yeah. So we wanted to get that upgraded uh, and we did because a lot of you guys talked about it recently. And it's true. The sound could be better. So we're trying this now. But it's a very special review today, guys. One that was really inspired by Johnny from the Craft Beer Channel because he did, when the whole first lockdown was going on, uh, a review of, or just a tasting video of some very old Fuller's Vintage Ale. I think it was the 2010 Vintage or something like that. And he had it with John Keeling, who was brewmaster mm. at Fuller's. Now in my cellar, I had an even older vintage and that I thought would be fun to do a little battle thing on or just try side by side. And I told Johnny, he's like, please do it ASAP. And now, over half a year later, we're finally doing it. So we're checking out two vintages of the Fuller's Vintage Ale. This is a, an old ale or an English strong ale, some also call it. You know, this malty, heavier beer brewed for the darker months. This is as classic British traditional beer as it gets. Yeah. Uh, I've had this beer many times in different iterations, on cask even, at uh, the local English pub, The Wharf. Me too. But I've never done like a side by side with some really old stuff. So we're checking out the 2009 vintage here. It's a 12 year old bottle. <laughs> and we have the 2019, which is two years old. Both are bottle conditioned. And I hope, you know, they're, they're, it looks like they're still doing this, even though they're taken over. Hmm. But I hope that they will keep making them bottle conditioned because that's why these beers can last a little longer or can be interesting to age because you have the yeast interaction in the bottle. Yep. Basically what happens is there's a bit of yeast in the bottle just to help develop flavors. Uh, and that's what, that was one of the big things about British ale back in the day when you talked about cask and all that, like it's live beer and it's ever changing yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. I think these will be old tasting, Yeah. but you know, we'll see if it's good mm. aging or not because a lot of the age I didn't do myself. Which one do you want to try first? I think we should try the fresh one first, but okay. just for, for a little reference, they change up the recipes a little bit every year. It has the highest quality British crystal malts and using gold, usually golden promise malt. But this one, the 2009 vintage had, uh, was it Fuggles hops, I think, or Goldings? Yeah, Goldings hops. And yeah. the 2019 has Waiitsi from yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. So completely, you know, different ballpark. Hmm. So, but yeah, I definitely think we should try the fresh one first, don't you think? Yeah, but uh, actually the crystal mold in this one is also from New Zealand. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's how Which they changed it adds notes of toasted bread and honey. Yeah. Yeah. And this one says it will age very well, like whiskey and stuff like that. Interesting. They also yeah. say they have to put a date of 2012 on the 2009 bottle because mm. of legal reasons, but they suggest that you could age it longer. And then okay. the import company that imported these just put a sticker on top of the original yeah. best buy date but the yes. fresh one here i mean it looks it's more you clear. know like a non-aged beer because it's quite clear yeah uh, very well carbonated still too very yeah. nice mahogany kind of reddish color yeah. not the darkest old ale but a lot of the fuller's old ale or english strong ales looks like this it's just mahogany yeah it reminds yeah. me of the golden uh, golden pride really. yeah yeah beige -ish sure. Yeah. let's check out the aroma Oh, mm -hmm. that just smells really nice. Mm. <laughs> Classic British. Yeah. There is an interesting fruity citrus, like yeah, almost orange like tangerine lemon, note. Yeah, lemon. Yeah. But it's just done so English. So it's yeah. not like super hoppy smelling. No. It's got very nice esters too, like really uh, stone fruity. Yeah. But I think maybe it's a bit more bright because of that way. Usually yeah. it's a bit more like orange marmalade. Yeah. And there's definitely a little bit of orange marmalade on this, but it yeah, definitely yeah. gives some unique brightness. Yeah. Really like nicely toasted bread and caramelly bready malt. Mm. It really takes me back to back in the day when I was getting into craft beer because mm. I love these styles from England. Uh, yeah, yeah, me too, because the place I went to the first here in Orville was the Wharf and that's traditional English beer yeah. and also traditional Belgian beer. Yeah. So, and I had loads of that for two years before I really, you know, switched over to the more modern stuff. 
So, well, yeah. let's give it a taste. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Wow, that's aged really well. Yep. It drinks like a 5% beer, yeah, it's not but that. it's so full on flavor compared yeah. to... It's like, it's very much English and it's so classic and traditionally well done. Whereas most of modern interpretations of this kind of beer, they're so much more like hefty and caramel. Like this is so drinkable. Yeah. It has a bit of like a licorice touch to it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and just this like toastiness, it's not mm -hmm. really roasty. It's more like, yeah, it's super toasted toasty. bread. If you ever chewed on fresh crystal malts, that's kind of the flavor mm -hmm. you're getting here. A really nice crystal malt flavor. The marmalade on toast, I'm definitely getting yeah. as well. Man, and I'm also getting a bit of that honey. Yeah, like honey, honey sweetness. And yeah, I think there is malt. a little bit of a sherry type oxidized thing, but it's super light. It's, yeah. it's aged really well, this one, but it's also only two years. A little bit of warmth going down. It's not like boozy, but... It's really nice, and but I really the dark fruity flavor and all this kind of like marmalady stuff that's coming from the yeast. I much prefer this in this than like the porter. The porter mm. is really nice, yeah. But it just suits the style more, I think. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's it's a very good beer. Mm. Almost a touch of spicy rye. Yeah, I actually see that. It definitely has like a spicy touch to it. It's not something major. No, oh, but that could also be the the hops. Yeah. So let's try and jump over here to the really old one. This is 12 year old vintage ale. Wow. Yeah. Historic beer right here. It's a little bit hazy, this one. Mm -hmm. And you, it looks more oxidized. It's a little bit more muddy, yeah, but yeah, it's a shade darker. Yeah. But this will, you know, it's pretty much bound to happen. And yeah. then it's just a time, a matter in this style, at least it's often a matter of waiting. Cause at one point the oxidized flavor is like sherry and port mm -hmm. wine and all this. And, at one point, it's also papery, but if it goes too long, it almost turns into something like soy sauce or something. But interestingly yeah. enough, look at the carbonation. There's actually still quite a bit of it. Yeah, for 12 years yeah. in the bottle. You yeah. can see it's really sticking to the sides yeah. of the glass. It looks very nice. And this was Golding Hops, and they just triple, what is this? Triple malted barley. Okay. Whatever that is. It doesn't say triple malted. T-I-P-P-L-E. Hmm. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, yeah let's well, try it. Let's try it. Let's try the aroma. Cheers. Oh, really that is. Nice. <laughs> this smells Holy like. Holy fuck! That. Yeah, that's. It smells nice. like dry sherry. Yeah. It does still. <laughs> and really earthy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> earthy and like sherry, and also I still think there's like a toastiness to it. Yeah, but it's even more honey-like. Yeah. Yeah. Aroma-wise, I definitely prefer yeah. the, the fresh vintage, Yeah, 100%. I think 12 years is also maybe a stretch in terms of aging a beer like <clears throat> yeah, this. Yeah, it's also only 8.5. Yeah, the only beers I would age this long, really, would be Lambics, especially yeah. Guza. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it smells, it smells super old. It smells yeah. like, almost like woody. It smells like and old then, wood, actually. Yeah. Like really old wood. Yeah, well, let's see what 12 <laughs> years did to those vintage ales. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. The flavor is much more pleasant than the aroma. Yeah. The because the aroma is a bit off-putting because it's super earthy. Yeah. Yeah. It's much more velvety in the mouth than the old, the new vintage. Yeah. I think it's just because the carbonation is a bit lighter. Mm. And it's really port wine and sherry-like. Almost yeah. maybe more sherry than port wine because it doesn't have that richness of no port no. wine. No. Yeah, it is very much like sherry. Again, that. Light toastiness throughout, touch of earthiness, but mm -hmm. it's much lighter than in the aroma. Yeah. Actually, interestingly enough, it's not as estery. It's almost like the ester profile from the yeast has died out yeah. with the yeast slowly dying in the bottle. Yeah. So what also happens with these bottle conditioned ales, over time the yeast will also die and autolyze, and part of the flavors that will come out is like something like soy sauce. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of smell that earthy, almost soy saucy thing on the aroma from the dead yeast. But when you drink it, it's not really that uh, present, but no. I definitely prefer the fresh vintage. Yeah, 100%. just try to go back, you know, it's, it still has that, you know, toastiness and caramel flavor, mm. but it's, it has that freshness. It's so much more vibrant. Maybe yeah. two years is the peak for Fuller's Vintage. Yeah, yeah. but oh yeah, the aroma on this one isn't good. No. Mm. 
the flavor is better. Much more present, yeah, yeah. present. But it's definitely it's aged more uh, better than something like Prize Old Ale. Prize Old Ale was, you know, it was completely gone. Yeah, it was so done. It was yeah. fun to try, but the fresh like rebrewed version they did with Marble Manchester Marble, where they got the last of Prize Old Ale from Fuller's to make their own interpretation with a new recipe and everything, and then also do barrel aging as you did in the past. There's Madeira barrels and bourbon barrels. Yeah, and all kinds of barrels. Of, yeah. They were really fun, but the old old vintage, which was like I think that was also from two thousand nine or something, mm. that just or six maybe with a cork that didn't help held up at all no. it was just like drinking sherry mixed with soy sauce it just tasted too old yeah yeah and just you guys so you guys know we're not gonna get sick from drinking this it's mm. an alcoholic beverage it's gonna be all right uh but yeah this is definitely you know past this prime but yeah. it's fun to see you know how a what age does to yeah, yeah yeah and it's also a lot of, you know, it's 10 years between... 12 years. Oh, yeah, so, ten, yeah, between between them. 10 years between yeah. the bottles, so... The 2019 is really good. Mm. That's actually really nice, classically brewed beer. Yeah. Um, I, I think I'm going 92 or 93 on the, on the Vintage Ale from 2019. I really enjoy it. For a classic beer, it's just dead on to style. And it's just so much more intense and complex than a lot of other, you know, uh, classic brewed beers because it has those percentages higher. It's kind of like the Yorkshire Stingo, something along those lines from York, uh, Samuel Smith, hmm. just without the kind of oak and, and uh, barrel character. Whereas I'm gonna go like 85 on the 09. It's still drinking all right, but it's just way past its prime. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I'm not gonna have trouble staying in the glass, but the aroma is not nice. No. Maybe 83. Hmm. It almost yeah. smells a bit like mead now. Yeah, it, it, the, the aroma is weird, but again, the flavor is, is, is decent. Hmm. Uh, yeah. 82 on that one and i'll probably go 91 on this one yeah it's very different than you know modern interpretation of these styles but yeah. i really enjoy it i mean i fell in love with english beer originally and so it's fun to revisit these yeah so yeah or revisit try them for the first time because i never had either of these vintages but i had a lot of vintage ale back in the day so i actually i think i bought a 96 or 98 vintage ale when I visited Fuller's way, like back in 2010 or 11. Okay. So like, it was like crazy expensive, and but I didn't review it. It was hmm. just when I started the channel. Okay. And I just drank it. I can't remember how it was. I just remember having a really old bottle of vintage ale because they yeah. had all kinds of vintages at their yeah. brewery store. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this was fun. So if you guys ever had a chance to try Fuller's vintage ale, let us know what you thought of it. This is a great classic kind of British or English strong ale or old ale, if you want to check out how it was brewed back in the day and how it's supposed to be brewed, if you're doing it 100% classic, this is something to check out. And uh, yeah, as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And we're gonna say cheers. Yeah. See you guys in another video.